Yep, uh, another hard disk tear down. I think I will continue with these uh, while my spouse is hampered with a broken ankle. Um, yeah, uh, card link. Um, yeah, last time I teared down this SCSI 320 server drive with 73 gigabytes and 10,000 RPMs. And it was from 2004. Okay, so roughly at the time I do this shot, 15 years old. Now I have two more server drives, the next and the generation after that. So these are Seagate's Cheetah's 15Ks. So before SSDs became available uh, for servers, that was the thing to put into your server if you really wanted uh, yeah, to have maximum performance. And we have no, long, no longer the parallel SCSI, we have now serial attached SCSI. And we are no longer hampered by this paltry 10,000 RPMs. No, these drives have 15,000 RPMs. And uh, roughly that one here, that's the older one, is from 2005, so 14 years old. And this is from 2008, so three years younger. But I guess for now we will concentrate on that one and compare it, uh, its specs and how it looks with this. So let's go to the back side and uh, yeah, first of all you notice that uh, the electronics, they obviously didn't get any simpler, did they? No, they didn't. <sighs> We'll have a lot of chips to look at, I guess. And just because people always ask about it, uh, I don't know why, this is a little bit dark. Give me a second. Or was I? Yes. Uh, just because people were asking, uh, <laughs> Uh, sometimes in the comments to this teardown videos, that's a talk number eight, okay? Okay, so yeah, the construction are uh, basically the same. Oh no, oh, there is a significant difference here. Uh, you see that thingy where the motor, uh, the head assembly is connected to the controller board. Yeah, uh, that's basically the same here. Same type of connector. But yeah, cut down on assembly costs. The motor is no longer connected by a flat flex, but also by some contacts to the back of the board right here. And as I mentioned before, I mean, you can count the chips. Uh, the electronic didn't really get simpler or more integrated, huh? So one, two, three, four, five big ones on that uh, 15 year old drive and one, two, three, four, five, six big, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six big ones on that one, even if it uses a serial interface. Interesting. And let's get any screws that are in the way on the back out here. That can't be a screw, can it? I don't believe it. Why should there be a screw? No, it's a screw that uh, is screwed in from the inside. Okay, so that's not a screw either. That's uh, just seals. So, hmm. 
That's also just a seal, not a screw. Yeah, it looks like there are no screws accessible from the back. These are just seals uh, for screws that are screwed in from the inside. And that's a big difference to... Okay, now I will lose all my parts. <clears throat> yeah, let's try this. Ah, okay, that was... A... Okay, one is gone already. That was a big difference here. I mean, you had here several screws on that one year older uh, drive that were screwed in from the outside and held in stuff in the inside. And what that means <clears throat> is basically you have a cheaper assembly process for that because uh, you don't have that, uh, yeah. Uh, turn around action or working from both sides, but uh, you just, yeah, work from the top when putting it together. Sorry, was trying to get the screw. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. It's still the torque number eight. <laughs> okay. There are some hidden screws somewhere, for example here, oh yeah, I guess that was the spindle axis, more screws, doesn't feel like it, well, maybe here, no, it doesn't look like it, okay now I have to cut This should come apart now. No, there must be another screw somewhere here in the vicinity. Ah, there it is. Wonderful. And still talk number eight. So I hope that's it yeah that's it and also worth of note uh, yeah you can call this value engineering i call it common sense um, all the screws so far are all of the same type yeah uh, higher number of the same screw means cheaper screw so let's put this away and uh, yeah, let me clean up here on the side a little bit, the old drive. This looks nice, very nice. So let's take that away and oops. Oh, there was already a part uh, yeah, attached here that goes in here just so we will be complete. Yeah, don't want to miss anything. So how do we get that assembly out? So I already uh, yeah, <clears throat> have this plastic part here, which is obviously supporting the parking position for the heads somewhere out here in the slots and it also has the yeah moisture absorbent uh, integrated uh, that was an extra part here also for the parking uh, of the heads that was an extra part in the older drive and uh, yeah this yeah, mesh or filter for any dirt or sputter coming off, catching that. That's also integrated in here. Uh, let me try to give you a closer look. That's the mesh catching any dirt. And in here is the moisture absorbent. So uh, yeah, let's focus down 
again. So, yeah, one part, three functions. Easier assembly, of course. Uh, the head is not one to come out yet. Okay, I have to play with this a little bit. And <laughs> still torques number eight. That screw here that holds in the magnet. Oh, different screw, longer. Let's see if we can, yeah. This is a strong magnet, but it seems like it's held in. Oops, is that really only held in by the magnetic force? Yeah, seems like it. And these are strong magnets, so don't get your fingers catched in here. Ah, okay, got that one. There's the head assembly and I can still not remove it because I cannot uh, yeah, get it here out of the way. And that's, yeah, because of this plastic part. So dash, and we should be able to get the head assembly out. No, we aren't. Why not? This doesn't look like a screw, but maybe it's screwed from this side. Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, you remember uh, the other one we had to turn it around the part in assembly process. Uh, not so here. I can just Screw it out. Screw it. Uh, no. It's okay. I'm not monetizing my videos anyway. Still, <clears throat> talks number eight. Okay, and this is also a little bit glued in. So here you have your head assembly uh, <laughs> and these are interestingly uh, the same screws like for the case. Now they are a wee bit longer, a wee bit longer, okay. So um, yeah, I've already shown you the heads once before but and this one catched a little bit of dirt or something. Yeah, nothing new to see here, I guess. But anyway, let's get that in focus. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you believe? Would you believe that they are really positioning these things on the micron. Yeah, I think I killed that one. Oh, poor guy. Um, yeah, let's continue. So this little plastic part and here's another little plastic part just keeping things tidy inside here. So two more screws. <clears throat> yeah, strong magnet. Same torque screws. Yeah, these are still very strong magnets and this is just, yeah, another plastic part, I guess, uh, yeah, to 
guide the coil of the head assembly or to put that into a lock it into a parking position. Ah. Okay, now comes a dangerous operation. Let me get these plastic parts. Putting the magnets together without hurting myself. <coughs> <laughs> okay. And that's it. So much easier to disassemble. Oh, here is uh, another separator plastic part between yeah, the discs. Is that coming out without a fight? Yeah, it is. And now we have just the disc and the motor and uh, unlike that older drive yeah uh, I'm not turning it uh, around again but in the older drive the motor or one side of the axle was actually screwed into the case and here you see it seems to be press fitted that is here are screws so maybe I mean double capacity, double the number of platters. We have now four platters here and in the old one it was only two platters. So uh, yeah, same data density. And we're still talk number eight. And it's really easy to screw that apart. Yeah, these are a little bit different screws of course. Platter one, spacer one, platter two. Oh. Let's do it this way. Yeah, spacers and platters. And then, yeah, it's not pressed in. <laughs> Should I say I'm impressed? It's not pressed in. Uh, still three screws. Holding the motor assembly inside the case. Wow. And yeah, just lost one. Doesn't matter. Is that really holding the motor assembly inside the case? So the mo motor assembly should come out. Yeah. Also something different here. Uh, well, you see you have only three connections to the motor. So yeah, while here you had, <clears throat> now everything is falling out again. Uh, yeah, you just have to believe me. Um, in the old drive it was four connections but um, yeah I write a wiring diagram down in a second uh, because I mean we're done with the disassembly and uh, you see this only a year later or maybe a few years later I mean I'm talking production date here with these drives only a few years later this is a much cleaner construction much easier to assemble and to disassemble than that thingy was. So yeah, cheaper in production. So this is our little uh, brushless DC motor uh, with just three contacts out of the drive, which is, uh, well, in fact, <laughs> without the electronics a three-phase AC motor and those things you can wire in uh, yeah two different configuration either in a triangle configuration like I've drawn it here so you have your three motor coils here or set of coils this could be actually uh, multiple coils but uh, yeah don't get carried away. Uh, you can wire it as a triangle and then you have three contacts like here or you can wire it as a 
star and then you get one, two, three. And if this would be really an AC motor neutral in the middle. Yeah, that's all. That's why that thing needs only three contacts and that older drive, yeah, heck four. Before we have a look with the micro lens on each and every of the main chips, uh, here the board and the overview again. The SCSI connector is here, serial SCSI. And uh, anything else worth of note? Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of voltage regulation going on. All these tiny chips here, yeah, with an inductor paired. That's all voltage regulation, each and every one. Uh, with the exception of that thingy here, and I couldn't find any information about that. And even that might be some voltage regulation. You see that big trace going over here. So lots of current going into that thing or through that thing. Anyway, uh, let's zoom in. Let's have a closer look at the board then. Uh, you have here for orientation your serial attached SCSI connector and yeah, right here. Okay, it's upside down. You can flip it if you, if you want, but that's an eight megabyte DRAM. And it probably works in conjunction right below it with that LSI logic chip, which is the host bus adapter. That is, that thing does all the communication with the SCSI interface. And of course, there is a, yeah, a little quartz here. What's that? 150.000. I guess that's megahertz. 150.000 megahertz because yeah, that DRAM here, that eight megabyte, that actually, or megabit, eight megabit, sorry. Uh, that actually works at 200 megahertz. So yeah, mm, anything else worth mentioning? Yeah, here, upside down again. Uh, yeah, they really didn't care how they put uh, the chips in. That's a Marvel chip, 88C7500M. And this actually implements all the analog and digital stuff for the head interface here. So decoding the analog signals, 10-bit uh, CRC and whatnot. Then we have, and here's the hole for the motor, an ST chip. That's just four megabit flash for obviously the host adapter. <laughs> uh, yeah, going around here and uh, yeah, below there in the corner are the connections for the motor. Uh, you have a smooth chip from ST, sorry, smooth chip. Uh, that's a motor driver, of course. We just saw the wiring diagram, three-phase AC motor or in conjunction with that chip here and BLDC. Um, and last but not least, uh, it should be somewhere here. Can I get a little bit, yeah. Another LSI logic chip, that's a specialized ASIC for SCSI drives. So I guess all the glue logic to get everything else working is integrated here. And that's almost it, okay? Uh, we saw everything. Um, one last remark regarding power consumption of that thing. Um, that little, newer drive, one, a few years, one year, uh, it's drive uh, drawing only one amp at the 12 volt rail. And it has 
two more platters and is rotating at 15,000 RPMs. While that older drive here, that one was drawing 1.2 amps at the 12 volt rail. Meaning, yeah, the motor, the drive technology got better. At the same time, the electronics on the SCSI, parallel SCSI, yeah, you remember, parallel uh, SCSI 320 drive, uh, the electronics only needed one amp on the 5 volt rail. While that newfangled serial SCSI stuff is drawing at most 1.5 amps at the 5 volt rail. So yeah, the higher frequencies involved in that serial um, communication, they definitely take their toll. Okay, uh, next time, uh, the next generation from the same vendor, Seagate, that was a Cheetah 15K4, and we will have a look at a Cheetah 15K6 from 2008. So yeah, another jump of three years into the future. Until then, bye.